what's up, everybody? You're listening to Nerd Funnel, where we take all the nerd news of the world and funnel it into your more than willing ear holes. I'm Bao Shui. With me today is Fuki. Hi, everyone. Hey, what's up, everybody? So today, um, we're entering into summer movie season. Um, actually, Fong and I just did uh, a cast on... Um, uh, going through the upcoming movies for 2017 for oh, summer. Nice. So that actually, due to wibbly wobbly timey wimey, will already <laughs> have been up for a while when this goes up. So mm. you'll have that up for you, nerd funnelers. Um, but today, since there are so many superhero movies, that's just kind of like the mainstay of how movies and TV shows and, I mean, we've always had superheroes, but they're just everywhere now. It's not just comics mm-hmm. and books. It's... uh. It's movies, it's TV, um, it's everywhere. It's uh, digital it's online media, it's yes. video games. So we're like we're feeling overwhelmed by lots of different types of superheroes, and they got so many different powers. And we're going to talk about power sets today, um, different archetypes, mm-hmm. different uh, our favorites, um, and how to keep it kind of fresh. Like so, you know, it, it gets kind of tired. Like, oh, what's your power? Oh, super strength, super speed. You know, laser vision, Superman, right? So it's or all. What, what, what's your power? Oh, I can build power armor. It's kind. It's kind of or, predictable kind of thing. So yeah, what's your, what's your what's your superpower? Oh, I you know I'm a magic magician. Like you know, it's like so. We how do you keep it from getting boring? Is that's the thing. Good, that's a good question. Right um, so I mean, everybody's familiar with baseline superpowers. You know, you got super strength, mm-hmm. uh, yes. heightened senses, of healing factors, yes. laser vision, invisibility, some type of, some type of freaking laser beam, <laughs> right, coming out of someone's Sorry. face or. That's why I felt bad about um, you. Were, Cyclops, right? Yes. So Cyclops, yes. he has it coming out of his eyes, right? And yes. then his brother Havoc has it coming out of his chest. Yes. Oh I yeah. I felt really bad for their sister. Where is that coming out of? <laughs> well. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Where, where, it's like, where could it come out? Th- that family's got to stop having kids because they're just gonna. There's gonna be like late. There's gonna be like a, uh, a X Men eventually called Laser Ass, where he just bends over and like shoots it out of his butthole. It's gonna be like it's gonna be, or they'll call him the, they'll call him the red eye or something like that. <laughs> red eye, red wink, eye. wink. <laughs> so how do you keep? I mean, so we've got like a gigantic list of superpowers, and so I thought first we talk about maybe our uh, our favorites that we okay. like seeing, and then yeah. maybe uh, how we find that uh, people are making these days old superpowers interesting again, like um, taking a more human side of it, looking at you know what it's like to kind of have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so as uh, as an old school Superman fan, I mean, of course, super strength, yes. super speed, flight is just like, you know, how awesome would that be, right? That, like That was the first one I was thinking about. That, I mean, the first I, one. I think when you're, when you're, when you think about superpowers, that's like the first thing you usually think about is because it's the, the least human thing you can do. Right? Yeah, because strength is like well, there's some people that are just naturally super strong. Like there's that's true. Like Stan Lee's got that TV show, The Superhumans, where oh, yes. he goes around the world yes. and like hunts down people that actually have like borderline superpowers. Like there's one. It's do- really amazing too. It's, yeah, it's oh my god, that. and it's hosted by like the world's bendiest man, and uh, mm-hmm. and then w- with Stan Lee, and then they go around and find people, and they've got guys that conduct electricity with their bodies. They've got guys, that, cool. yeah, a that guy that that um, could be underwater for like yeah hours i'm like what Ooh. yeah exactly he could hold his breath for a long time that was and crazy. there was a guy that could uh could rip phone books and spoons in half yes. and then he could hold motorcycles on each hand that were like speeding away like mm-hmm. super strength right yes that was really fascinating because as a as a as a trainer as an athletic trainer trainer mm-hmm. um the w- the way that the scientists explain that one is that he has this genetic freak mutation where um, normally, your body recruits muscles, tissues, yes. sequentially. So one fiber, then the next, then the next, yes. until yes. it reaches mm-hmm. fatigue. Because bodies are naturally very efficient. Yeah, they so. want to conserve energy. So they only use as much as they need to. Mm-hmm. So this guy had the genetic freak ability to re- recruit every muscle fiber he wanted to simultaneously at will. And that usually, crazy. And usually, you can only achieve that kind of strength by... Um, by like plyometric like explosive exercise, like you land and absorb an impact or a mm-hmm. recoil, right? Um, but he could just will it, and that that's how he got that crazy. strength. And it's just freaking nuts, like just random mutations like that. So mm-hmm. I mean, there are there are certain things that like okay, well, people can do them, but it's just like well, this superpower just takes it to the next level. There's a dude on that show that was like a runner, and he ran like a hundred, was, I was the same he ran like a hundred miles a day, and he had like super fast healing because his tissue no, just regenerated. Yeah, and he had no lactic acid in his body, so he just keeps on doing it. No, no just no he never got fatigue. tired. Yeah, he got no tired, and like, his muscle tissue just rebuilt. 
and it was, just it was like, crazy that was crazy i saw that one and i'm like that was wow cool. that was that was pretty cool and yeah like, oh. so uh, yeah there's like the, the, i think the, the cool superpower is the ones that like we will you know barring our own interference with like augmented tech or biotech or something we won't be able to do like yeah. flight or mind control or telepathy or mm-hmm. um you know shooting laser beams out of our <laughs> eyes things like that yeah um so like you know the, and the, the problem that i think arises when like so many different human or so many different characters have the same power sets yeah yeah that's true yeah and yeah it's tough to try to distinguish them and try and make it fresh Mm -hmm. after so many years of doing the same thing over and over and so you remember when we played mutants and masterminds yes the tabletop are a really fun game if you haven't played it it's tabletop a superhero game but like all those books have archetypes right Mm -hmm. and so a lot of the superheroes like you've got the paragon you've got the tank strong guy you've Mm -hmm. got the the tech master you've got the martial artist you've got speedster speedster the the mystic yeah so like they all kind of fall into that that realm yeah it's a kind of kind of stereotype things yes so it's it's tough to find a way to make those things because we've had what you know coming up on 80 90 years of comic books yeah where they're just like the same kind of rehash of like well it's you know what's the difference between um you know captain marvel and superman right Mm -hmm. they both have super Mm -hmm. strength super speed aside from the fact that billy batson's real superpower is the fact that he's a kid Oh. mentally and in a man's body that's Got like it. the real power is like he has just a different perspective on like he goes about solving things differently like superman's really smart really intelligent mm-hmm. you know but he's an adult yeah that's true uh, billy billy is a kid wow in an adult so. body like he says the he says the shazam <laughs> and then he's freaking captain mm-hmm. marvel but in body mm-hmm. He's still just not, a kid. Not, yeah, not not the personality. So, no. so they, that's that's how they distinguish them between the two. So that's, that's why, why, yeah. So that's why, like, kind of, I almost enjoy reading certain things about, like, I enjoy reading Captain Marvel stuff and the back end mm-hmm. Marvel more, just because it's not more, but I enjoy it on a on a in a on a kind of newer, fresher level because oh, okay. because you know it's it's like well, he's not trying to solve everything just by adulting it and logicing it and you know he, he's reckless and he's kind of fun loving and playful you know <laughs> doesn't take things too seriously which is good which is like oh gives you a new perspective on how to use these powers so you don't use it this one way weapon you use it this way yeah and see there's a really good similar. comic of of how like uh you know uh captain marvel fights off these evil invaders and mm-hmm. you know is using his powers and people love him for it and he's really successful and then um he comes across this kid in a shelter like he's going doing a, like a little you know mm-hmm. bringing food and touring a shelter and okay. this kid is just like suffering from severe domestic abuse like the kid just oh beat man him, right? and so he goes there to the the guy's house mm-hmm. as captain marvel and he's like hey you know you shouldn't beat your son but the guy like can't you know he just he can't like punch the dude and fix it right mm-hmm. so and that's all that captain marvel can really do and so as it turns out he keeps visiting the hospital but he goes as billy as his little wow. kid self. and it turns yeah. out he makes the kid's life a lot better that's good and uh, allows him to take the steps to kind of confront the issue and get help and take the proper channels to have his father removed from the picture just by being a friend of the kid as as, as a kid you know really so that's something that's like actually- superman could not do no because he's Superman, and yeah, no. <laughs> or like when Superman, uh, the Grounded series, and Superman walked across, he finished fighting hordes of aliens and saved the universe, and he comes back. He's like, I'm tired. I'm gonna go for mm-hmm. a walk. Uh-huh. And uh, he's like, I'm tired of flying around. I'm tired of the 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 the, the, pot, the everything is just too big. I just need to chill out. So he, he walks across America and just takes a stroll. Wow. And he, he kind of does like the Forrest Gump thing where he meets a bunch of different people and kind of improves their lives. And then he gets to the point where he's fighting things he can't really beat. Like he can't, you know, he can't fight child abuse. He can't yeah, do anything can't, about he it. He can't fight cancer. Or like, And instead in of uplifting, way. yeah, he can't fight cancer. Yeah. So instead of like uplifting, it's actually like the longer he goes, thinking it's going to be relaxing to do this, the, the worse he, he starts to feel. It's like, well, I'm more effective as the protector of Earth on like a macro yes. scale from like alien invaders. I can't do anything. It's up to human beings to take care of this stuff. I can't do this. And wow, it's like really that's... brings him down to earth. So he runs up against the limitation of that classic power set. 
That's mind blowing right there. Yeah. Because you always think superhuman powers is like you're invincible, you're you're powerful and once you realize you're not, yeah. You just it's depressing right there. So my superpower is I don't shut the hell up. So Fuki, why don't you Take a little, take a right here. What are your favorite powers? Like, what do you like to? I, I know you love magic. I know you love the mind kind of element too. Is yeah, I was thinking like telekinesis or mind reading. Mm-hmm. I, those are kind of the things I would like to do. But once I think about it more, I think, oh man, it must be a pain to get those powers and like read everyone's mind because you're you're. Yeah, head will never relax. And like, well, oh, it depends on how much control you have over it. Same thing with super strength. It's like, okay, so take Jessica Jones, right? Okay. So you know how Jessica Jones, did you, ever, did you watch that series on Netflix? I heard of it. I haven't seen it. Okay. So Jessica Jones is like, she tried to be a superhero. Okay. Uh, I think her name was Jewel or something like that. Oh, she tried okay. to like be a superhero mm-hmm. with her super strength yes. and, and, and vulnerability and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it just didn't work out. Okay. It just wasn't happening. She was too cynical. She was like the Janine Garofalo. She's like the Janine Garofalo of the Marvel universe. Just like the bitter, cynical, like this sucks. Like, you know, it's just, you know, very down on everything. Mm -hmm. And so she tried to, her, her friend tried to get her to be like, Oh, well you should be like this bright bubbly superhero and be inspirational. And she just, she couldn't do it. So she becomes a detective. So mm-hmm. she tries to solve crime the old-fashioned way, mm-hmm. but she still has to see superpowers, right? Yes. So she's constantly, because she's not working at it, she's constantly accidentally like breaking stuff because mm-hmm. she can't control her strength, right? Mm-hmm. So I guess it depends on how much control you have. Like if you had a mental power, like you're saying, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, you know, can I switch off the, the voices or can are they just on, constantly on? Because that could drive you insane. That can. That can. Legion did a good job with that. That was a show that was just on FX. Mm-hmm. And Legion is a uh, a Marvel property. Okay. So Legion is a superhero, one of the most powerful telepaths, maybe even more powerful than Professor X. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because he can like astral project and reach other planes and nice. and do crazy stuff. But the thing is, and he can absorb other people's mental powers through their minds. Okay. Um. So what the thing, what happens though is when he, when he, does that he absorbs their like every time he absorbs a power or um reads someone's mind it creates a fr- uh, like a, a factioning in his head another voice he has so he has multiple personalities he has thousands of, that's of personalities wow that's why they call him legion that's crazy like his i like you know the the i am legion like i am i am one who is many mm-hmm. from the bible yeah so he's legion because he has literally thousands of personalities everybody he's ever read or or absorbed or whatever is stuck in his head as a separate personality. So he has no idea who he is anymore. That's crazy. He has to fight to maintain can control. So yeah, like, can you keep it under control is the key. Yes, yes. And control could be tough. Yeah. Especially when you're learning your new powers. You don't know if you control it or not. So Yeah. Uh, another one I liked is uh Rogue's power from X Men because she could steal other people's power for as I recall, she didn't seem to like it that much. No, she couldn't uh, yeah. touch anybody. That's true. That's true. But I don't know. In my mind, I guess I I seem to like it because you could test out their powers to see who it's like. But it must be really painful for her because yeah. she can't physically touch anybody, and she doesn't have that sensation of. And just that that's just the, the mutants, right? If he touches humans, she's like kills them. Oh yeah, or, like, she takes, yeah, takes yeah. yeah, that's so that's crazy. Right Maybe. There. But. Maybe not the best power to have. Like some of these powers are just like, well, this is more of a freaking curse. Like the blob. Remember the blob from oh, X Men? It's like, oh my god, yes, yes. It's like, well, yeah, I'm super strong and my body's invulnerable, but I mean, I have to get all my shoot special tailored. You know, I can't go in elevators because set off the alarm. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. have to eat, you know, twenty five thousand calories a day. It's like, well, that's crazy. There's some there's some downsides to some of these powers. <laughs> True. That is true. Uh, another one I liked is Mystique's. Mm, which shape shifting. Shape shifting. Yes, yeah. that would be cool. That would be interesting. He's like, what happens if you could just change to anybody you want for, you know, how long as you want, as long as you you see them first, and then you could just change into their yeah their form and be the, be them for however long you need to. That might. Yeah. I don't know. That's that's rough because it might be. It might be a, a big responsibility not to misuse that because you could. And like so that's a, the, the hard thing about it is like it's easy to be evil with some of these powers. It's like, well, I can read your mind. I was like, well, what's your, what's your what's your what's your what's your bank account number and your pin? Oh, now I know. You know where do you keep your credit card? Oh, now I know. Like it's like, well, it's easy just to slide in. It's hard to be good because yeah. it's 
you have to be responsible with the power. But you know, just for like one day, change it to anybody you want. Kind of nice. That'd be nice, just for. Yeah. I've never had boobs. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> just curious, you know. You'd be like looking. You'd just be looking down. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I gotta play with these for, <laughs> I gotta play with <laughs> for, for a day. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it might be a little fun. Um, but shape shifting, like, okay, so we got Mystique is a good shape shifter. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I don't know any good shape shifters. Can you think of a, a shape shifter? Okay, there was Morph in X Men for like one episode. Remember, remember Wolverine's friend that died in the first episode of the X Men cartoon? They wrote really? him especially for the cartoon. Oh, really? He was a good shapeshifter. Oh, okay. But when you think about it, like, I can't really think of any shapeshifters that are really good because you've got Mystique. Um, you've got the um, the Dominion and in, in Star Trek, mm-hmm. who are the 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 liquid shapeshifter people. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, that, I know. Yeah, shapeshifting. Yeah, you know, it's mostly for like pleasure and evil. But, yeah, because you know. it's, it's by its very nature, it's something like clandestine and kind of secretive. You know, it's not like. No, that's true. I just thought it would be cool just to. I might understand you know, how it would go, but maybe like. Limit that power for like once, like like once a once a day or once yeah, a week or something shift once a day there you go that <laughs> might rain it a little bit um there's another uh what about like uh people that are like animals like part animal like beast like uh oh, like beast okay. or kind of night crawl oh night crawl is night crawl is cool he's got he looks like an animal and he's got teleportation That's there's true. a good one that is a good one right there teleportation is good too but yeah beast or beast boy mm. that's a good one or yes i guess hawk girl <laughs> I I mean, she could fly right and she yeah. has a Mace, right? Yeah. Well, they don't really like it. There's the difference between like superheroes that have the power where they have the powers of a certain animal, but they're not transforming into the animal or don't have any of their characteristics. Uh, okay. And yeah, there's the, the ones that like are actually just, okay, wait, you're kind of an elephant or you're kind of a, you know, a whatever. <laughs> like, um, well, Spider Man and Crown that, like, Spider Man did the thing where his he got zapped by like some sort of radiation and it, it, it continued his mutation. From the reactive spider, so he didn't. Mm-hmm. He stopped being a human being with spider powers and started turning into like a man spider. So like he started growing like extra legs and fur and eyeballs and stuff like that. What? And they had to like figure out a way to like reverse, reverse the, the re- mutation re- a little oh, bit. Oh my god, really? But oh. you know his instincts started getting more primal, and he really liked it because he was getting stronger. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Wow. Well. And there's Beast Boy who like actually changes form. And then there's like, then there's like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, speaking of, please speaking of Wonder Woman, who's coming up? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. The cheetah, cheetah girl, uh-huh. whatever. Yes. She's super fast and strong, but she's not an actual cheetah. Yeah. Or penguin, who just looks like a penguin. <laughs> he doesn't actually have any penguin powers. Not that I know what you kind just, of powers you would have as a penguin, like the ability to you, you waddle can. and eat fish. Swim, swim fast. Or no? Yes, yes. No, the Batman. This <laughs> is not Batman movie, right? With uh, what Catwoman? That Catwoman with Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh Catwoman. god. I thought that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Penguin. Uh, who was Penguin? Oh, I forgot who was Penguin. Oh, in um. In the Batman. That, that, uh, Returns. Batman Returns. Is it Batman Returns? The second one. The second movie. I think so. Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah, that was Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. Okay. That that was <laughs> perfect casting. He was like halfway <laughs> Penguin already. He re- <laughs> they just had to. They just had to put the makeup on, and he was good. Wow! Wow! I know, I know. He he really did look right. like a big. But when when I auditioned for that one, he's like, and Danny DeVito's like, so uh, how much weight do we need to gain? What do I need? What kind of do? He's like, no, nope, you're good. We shouldn't put some white makeup on you. You're good. You're good. Just show up. You're you're, you're set. You uh, you, <laughs> you, the you nailed it already. <laughs> you got the nailed it already. Um, so yeah, there's a lot. Of, this, this seems like a, a lot of superpowers come with a lot of problems inherent to them too. Yeah, that's true. Um, there's like uh, the okay, so teleportation, right? That's a freaking awesome one. That is an awesome one. I like that one just because it saves so much time. <laughs> of I, course, it's more com- it's very convenient. <laughs> I see very little downside to that one actually. Teleportation. Yeah. Well, wouldn't you have to know where you're going first before you teleport? Yeah, you don't want to materialize in a wall. Yeah, you don't want to do it. So, so there, there are some, there are some limitations, but not that's not a big limitation. I would say that at least if you've been there one time, mm-hmm. it's in your mind. There you go. You te- you could teleport to that place again. Yeah. Once once you see it, so I think. It's well, not too bad. There's the there's the thing where okay, so he has to see where he's going, 
right? Yeah. Sometimes, so you have to be in like a visual range. And then sometimes teleporters will have the thing like, well, I have to see where I'm going or else I can materialize in something and die. And there's some where they, they will try to teleport, and mm-hmm. if it's something they can't materialize into, they just won't go. It just doesn't work. It, yeah, it'll probably just go back to where they were. Yeah, you, just, you can't, like, bamf into, like, a solid wall. Mm-hmm. What I've always wondered is because, okay, so you can see where you're going, right? But say you wanted to teleport, like, somewhere on the other side of the world. Say say, yes. you, say you went to, like, Tahiti, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I want to go back to Tahiti. Mm-hmm. It's like to that beach, right? And so you think <laughs> of it, right? You can picture it. Yes. But, okay, so... Like if you're like I don't know how does the teleportation work like does it remember like relative coordinates or absolute coordinates like so say you go to Tahiti in the summer right mm-hmm. and then next time you want to go to Tahiti and it's in the winter yeah so the planet is on the opposite side of the sun and so maybe your the teleportation remembers the Tahiti position from summertime on Earth and so no, not, what not happens if you teleport in the winter and then you materialize in fucking space. <laughs> Like so, how does it account for like, like the Earth's rotation around the, around the, the sun? Like that's a good question, right there. There's there's some physics there's some physics yeah. things there. That and I, w- I was also wondering, amazing. could you teleport from like looking at pictures? Like, cause you always see pictures of like different like uh, scenery. Like, oh, this is the Caribbean. This is oh, Canada. Yeah. You go here. Could you teleport just from seeing a picture of it and then just go there, or is it? You, you have, have to actually physically, physically, physically be, be there. there. That's another thing. Like, yeah. if you want to go visit the Coliseum in Rome, and it's like, well, I've seen a there picture of it. I've never been there. there do are. I get? Do I able to teleport? That's a good question. Um, does it like? Does the, the the like the physical world have to imprint on you somehow for your body to be able to recall it? I wonder how I, that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Um, that would be interesting to if we could find out, but we can't, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> So another one, uh, like immortality and healing factor. Ooh. That's another one. Like, first of all, would you want to live forever? That's the biggest question. Now, here's, here's what I, when I was younger, I used to. I used to want to live forever. I mean, mm-hmm. you remember when I was young, I was like, oh, I want to be a vampire. I want to be like immortal. Oh, oh yes. I, I so remember that. <laughs> remember Bobby's emo vampire phase? Let's not. Yes, yes, yes. Let's not. Um, but uh, now mortality. it's like, well, that's like, well, you know, in order to give your life meaning, it's got to end sometime, right? If it goes I on agree. forever, like then it just doesn't have any meaning, I guess. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's kind of morbid, morbid thought, but if you're an immortal, like it's got to get freaking boring after a while. I mean, for me, I, I would think if you're an immortal, you're always going to see your friends die. And that's oh. like the hardest friends and family die because you're going to live forever and yeah. they're not. And I think that's like the saddest most painful thing ever because you make new friends but they die and like yeah. you're living forever I think nobody should have to go through that where you just have to see them yeah. die and die and that's that, terrible that and then you like may, and then that, that's in a lot of these like you know in a lot of novels and in both the, the thing is like vampires like go insane or they go underground and bury themselves because they just can't take the pain of all the loss over and over and over again yeah that's like in uh, Interview the Vampire Antonio Banderas he's like <laughs> He's like, therein lies the irony that finally kills us all. The oh, world changes. Yes. We do not. Yeah. That, so it's like, there's wow. your downside right there. So yeah, it seems like a lot of these superpowers are are having a little bit of a uh, a, a, a drawback. It's never easy, I think. But, um, although healing factor would be kind of cool. So like like Wolverine, like he's not gonna live forever, mm-hmm. but he's gonna live a hell of a long time. Yes. And it's gonna be relatively like. He's not going to be sick. He's not going to mm-hmm. have broken bones. So there's a lot of like the physical pain will be brief and at, at best. That's true. That's true. Although I mean, like, like if I had the healing factor of Wolverine, but just did not live his lifestyle, I'd be cool. Like, because Wolverine <laughs> like makes full use of that healing factor. Like, oh, that stuff works oh, on overdrive yes. all the time. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I would not plan on getting shot and cut up and stabbed a whole bunch. <laughs> But how about the mentality part? How about the, not the physical, but like how about the mental part? Where, oh, like your memory doesn't Yeah, yeah how about the psychological part? Of like, because you've been getting hit so many times and you're getting, you know, you know you're going to feel for a moment, but you still feel it and you still have memory of it. W- would you still want to go keep going through that even though you're going to heal up anyways? It, it, that's a... You mean like does it desensitize you? 
over okay. time. I don't know. Does it really? Dis- I mean, I don't, I don't know. Wolverine doesn't seem like he was desensitized. He seems like he gets, he still gets hit and he still feels the pain. But he like still he, gets pissed. Yeah, he still gets pissed, and so like ah, yeah. go after him. But he probably still has the psychological part of it. Just. Yeah. The pain and I don't know if I would want to keep doing it. I mean, well, there's a difference between like psychological pain and physical pain, and you know the superhero that in in like embodies that and explores that, mm-hmm. and the Hulk. Oh, right. So it's like so that that's actually a good contrast, like Wolverine and Hulk. So like you've okay. got somebody that can instantly heal, and so he's got the 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 body regenerates, but you know, so like they both kind of deal with the pain of it differently, right? So. He, you know, lost his memory and then, he, you know, he comes back, Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as the Wolverine and he has to kind of fight for to get his memory back and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Banner's problem is he remembers too much and uh, yeah, it it's the, the pain that, that doesn't go away from all the suffering. Uh, and like that's his wellspring. Like the angrier he gets, the more suffering he's under. The stronger he gets. Yeah, but then more berserk he gets. So he doesn't control that anger. He just goes, ah, yeah, he goes crazy and just attacks friends and foes. So and that's the double edged sword. That's there too. Is like, well, I want to be a hero, but in order to conquer more and more dangerous foes, I have to suffer more and more. Like if I want to conquer someone stronger and stronger and stronger, I have to be angrier and angrier and angrier. And then like, at what point do you kind of like just lose yourself? Right. That's a, that's a cycle right there. And that's going to be it's it, terrible. It's, yeah. It's going to reach to a point where they'll just be angry forever. And that, that, that can't be good. Well, that's what, that's what, <laughs> that's what's, what's the name? Uh, Mark Ruffalo said in Avengers one. He's like, what you see, what you see get? And he's like, I'm always angry. Right. So I guess he learned to live with it after a while. Yeah, but it could still be unpredictable. He could be angry like at any time, and you you just don't know it. Yeah, unless you can control it. I don't know. Like it's interesting because like they've. I mean, at least in the films and sometimes in the comics, they've gone different ways of like what triggers him. Like I remember in the Edward Norton one, it was like his heart rate. If it goes over two hundred, he starts transforming. Oh, okay. I thought that was kind of lame. Yeah, I know that that sounds lame. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know. I do. That's true. I mean, I think Mike Buffalo is pretty, doing pretty well. As oh Hulk. yeah, he's the best one. The best one. At, yeah, out of the other ones that we had. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Let's forget about the whole, those Hulk movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know what? The, the Ang Lee one was stylistically very good. It was very comic booky. And what's his name? Eric Bana it didn't do a terrible job, but the script I was heard, just weird. I heard it was just boring. I heard there was like barely any action there is memory. some good action scenes but it's not all about that i know it's not all about that but i just, I just like i i hear from my brother because my brother watched it he's like it was just boring because it's just the pacing was off it, it is day. very slow yeah it's it more like the old tv show the incredible Hulk tv show oh, it's a lot like really? that one where it's kind of like you know a drama and then sometimes he transforms yeah okay and that's it yeah. <laughs> okay well yeah i mean it could work i it, guess it didn't work that time but yeah it could work <laughs> well i mean you know it worked to uh, the old style worked enough because hey lou ferrigno is still doing cons and that's signing true. autographs that is true people. people like him they still have reruns of it on tv <laughs> so um what about te- so you mentioned telepathy what about telekinesis moving stuff with your mind Ooh. that's bad because you know what's going to happen is i'm going to get super fat <laughs> like if you can move stuff with your mind would you ever move again? No. No. We'd all look like those people from Wally. Like all people getting carted around those little little oh, floaty yes, ca- yes, floaty yeah, cars yeah. or whatever those floaty so- Ooh. sofas. Ooh. <laughs> like I would just be picking stuff up with my mind and like just bring it to yourself. Just like you know, bring it stuff. Just put it in your mouth. You, you know, you wouldn't even move. I'd right. move myself with my mind. Like it would just be wait, ridiculous. Wait, could you? Wait, could you do that? Could you move yourself or something? You would you just. You just will yourself to lift up, right? Totally plausible. Because I refuse to believe, like, if you're a te- if you're a tele if you're a, a, t- a telekinetic person and you can move like a freaking bus, mm-hmm. you could not lift yourself up. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Which is why That's I wonder true. why aren't the Jedi just like floating themselves around all the time? That's a good question. Because freaking Yoda, he picked up an X wing, right? Oh. Why yeah. isn't he just like mm-hmm. floating his little ass around everywhere? 
Instead of crutching his little bald head around. Well, maybe it takes up too much energy. You might have it to. It takes too much focus, right? Maybe. Yeah, and maybe you have to be like really concentrated on it to lift something heavy. Yeah. Yeah, if you're heavy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that you know what? That sounds like an excuse. And you know what Yoda thinks about excuses? <laughs> do or do not. There is no try. By the way, your final words, I'm really good at Yoda voice. You do not want to get me drunk and then do Yoda. ask me to talk Yoda because I will not stop <laughs> until someone asks me to do uh, Kevin Spacey or Christopher Walken. But Ooh, that's another nice. conversation. Yes, well, we'll do that another <laughs> time. <laughs> um, let's see. What else we got? What about um, elements, controlling elements? So you got like Avatar, Last oh, Airbender. Yes. You've got like magicians that can control different things. So like Killer Frost goes ice. ice. You've got like... Firestorm doing fire, and poison ivy doing poison, poison ivy's got plants, poison, yes, that kind of thing. Ooh. For me, I would prefer since I, I like cooling, cool stuff, blue stuff. I'm like more of the the ice, ice, ice. So Killer Frost or Mister Freeze, or I'm a water, I'm a water bender by nature. All like right. I would, that's my number one element. I mean, I would be, I would be a freaking water bender. I would love it. Um, the water. Oh yeah, that that would be awesome. Right well, there. the cool thing about the water benders is, that in, at least in Avatar, they could make ice. They could just freeze it, right? Mm-hmm. They, yeah, probably. They had control. I mean, they lived in the freaking polar regions. <laughs> but um, yeah, I would like uh, like water. Or how, uh, or how about storm? Who controls oh, weather weather patterns? Yeah, that's so. actually a really kind of like you wouldn't think like it's an awesome power to have. Like it's like oh. Uh, what else can you do besides shoot lightning and wind and whatnot? But it's like, well, think about it. Like, if you wanted to take out a city, yeah, yeah, it would be very easy if it was like, like you just like, okay, well, hey, here's like, you know, twenty five tornadoes. Deal with that shit. Because cities are not prepared for no. na- nature's wrath. <laughs> yeah, you could flood things. You flood, could turn up the temperature or the freeze. heat. Yeah, it's you like freeze you everything. are pretty freaking powerful. Yeah, and like if you really practice that, it's like, okay, hey, hey, planet, I'm holding the world hostage for one hundred billion dollars. Or you're all going into the next freaking ice age. Like, it's going to be cloud cover every day for the rest of your lives until that, this planet freezes over unless you continually pay me, like, a whole bunch of money. Wow. Right? It's pretty freaking, you know, ridiculous, el- like, power to have. Good, good thing Storm is on our side, not, not the evil side. Storm hasn't figured out how to do that yet. <laughs> well, yeah. it, it'd be... It's a widespread. Yeah. Plan. Like, how, I don't know if she has enough power to do. Depends on which movie you watch. The first X Men. Remember how ineffectual she was in the first X Men? Like oh, she, yeah. she, oh, she, God, she shot so like true. one lightning bolt and and fried Toad, and she made it, it. She made it snow a little bit. <laughs> that was it. And then like in it, like really like really really. What was really cool was when she was in Days of Future Past and like doing like lightning tornado kicks and all that crap. I did. I she was did channeling like the, the 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 weather powers in more like a fighting style instead of just being like, "Oh, I'm just gonna sit here and it's gonna get a little windy." Oh yeah. <laughs> or I'm just gonna sit here. I did like her in that one. Yeah. She, yeah. And did you like her in Apocalypse? In the I mean, she did some attacks. Yeah, but, she did some stuff. Yeah. yeah, she did some stuff. So I mean, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's a deceptively. I mean, that's what the Weather Wizard did. So Weather Wizard is one of Flash's enemies oh, in Flash's Rose really? Gallery, mm-hmm. and because one of Flash's weaknesses is, is, is like super low temperatures that stop vibration because mm-hmm. speed is vibration. It's it, mm-hmm. you know, it, yes. they're the molecules. Yeah, yeah, you have to. So they're very equivalent. So uh, there is, um, there's one actually. There's one actually. The old ba- uh, the Superman Adventure cartoon. Mm-hmm. Um, Superman and Flash team up, and Weather Wizard like freezes them all. Like he just freezes the entire all Metropolis. Oh wow! And so Superman and Flash trying to have this race. He was faster, mm-hmm. and so he freezes them in the middle of the ocean, and they are like so frozen they can't move until. Um, he ends. He, he like the weather wizard goes back to Metropolis to like rob it blind or whatever he wants to do. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Superman's. It's funny. Superman's like uh, it shows Superman. He's like frozen in the ice, and then you see his eyes get red, mm-hmm. and he starts like burning a hole. And then it's it like starts be, bubbling, laser beams and then it, like the water starts melting out, and then eventually shoots through, and he like melts himself down. He's like lasering off, and then he gets out of there and he's all drenched. He's like ah. Oh. Uh, uh. And then Flash just sitting there chilling. He's like, <laughs> just like rubbing his nails. And he's like, and he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, I vibrated out of there. Like, that's awesome. He's like, forget, I can pass through solid things, man. <laughs> oh my god! Wow, wow. But wouldn't it be just kind of 
being controlling weather, wouldn't that be just too powerful? And like, what what would be the after effects of weather changing? Wouldn't it like affect the moon too because you're affecting the ocean with like all these like hurricanes and tornadoes? And I mean, the, yeah, would you have trouble like? Like so, say he's like, okay, well, I'm gonna flood this town unless they mm-hmm. pay me the money, right? So you flood, you start flooding, flooding it. the town, yeah. And it's like, can you like will it back? Yeah, can you? Yeah, I, I don't think you can. <laughs> yeah, there's there's collateral damage that you need to take into account with a a weather wizard yeah. or a weather person. Um, let's see what else we got. What else is looking good? Um, there are some uh, technomancers, people that have like control over technology with their minds or their bodies. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. You ever heard of seeing those guys? Uh, Cable is one of them. Really? Cable has like innate control over machinery, like computer mind. Like he's nice. like so, he's like slaved into it. So that's kind of a cool thing. That is the mother cool. box. Yes. Um, that's a cool power to have, just because technology. It's actually becoming more and more real. Yes. Like we are, we can make, we can move curses with our minds on the screen now. Like they'll hook up electrodes to people's brains oh. and you can move cursors and click things. Like for people that are oh, quadriplegics or paralyzed, mm-hmm. they have that ability now where like they can look use and so use cool. their minds to do it. Cause it used to be, it had to be like a retinal thing, like mm-hmm. a, a lens or whatever. And now they can do it with the mind. That's pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. Or, or like a oh, cybernetic wow. arms that like read the nerve like the attaches to the nerve endings of your arm mm-hmm. and then you you will your arm to move and the nerve endings that fire trigger movement in the prosthesis yes yes so that's freaking that's like, awesome right there. we're coming close to like cyborg cyborgs i guess were like a technomancer oh yeah yeah, yeah i can see that he I would he would he would definitely freaking count <laughs> wow i know yeah we're, we're it's coming close to that age getting close so yeah as we get we get closer and further along science is making more and more superpowers reality but um i don't think we're gonna get unassisted flight just by willing it anytime soon no i don't think there's a dna switch you can flip for that one we'll just we'll we'll still look for it but (laughs) unless, unless, unless somehow our bodies develop like a genetic ability to like make anti gravitons and just like well, let's see. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, it's like, well, let's see. If Earth, if we could get rid of Earth's gravity, no, no, no that's okay. <laughs> I mean, the best you'd hope is like, like Magneto, like magnetic powers, because he can, he flies, but it's just because he just reverses his polarity Which to the is, Earth's whatever it is, and he rides the yeah, field lines and whatnot. And that is actually pretty. Cool. That's pretty badass, that actually. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but then, of course, you know, his greatest nemesis, plastic. <laughs> no. Wood, ah, oh, can't deal, can't deal. I know, right? So just bring him out to like a... Uh. Like I'm going to stop you with my plastic knife, with my, my carbon, or my, yeah, or it, my, it, my plastic knife. It, it'll work because you can't do, you can't or, do anything about it. Magneto defeated by wooden spear. Didn't see it coming. That's a dead. Stop, stops bullet storm, wooden spear, still goes through. Ah, oh, so close. <laughs> headlines right there. Headlines right there. Just yeah. see, I gotta just see it right there. <laughs> That'd be terrible. But um you know, wow. they, they they tried that I think in one of the movies it was like they gave them the plastic bullets and the plastic guns. Oh yeah, I I think I remember that. Yeah. They, they they knew. Well I think we've covered a, a good long lot list of uh of uh of powers and their mm-hmm. possible upsides and downsides yes and how we've kind of seen them treated in in media if you nerd funnelers have any powers you'd like to talk about or uh want to address uh how they're being treated treated well or mistreated in pop culture nerd culture let us know at uh, facebook.com slash nerd funnel uh youtube.com slash nerd funnel you can like comment and subscribe or on our website at nerdfunnel.com. um so uh, i'm gonna go Jump out the window and see if I can fly yet. And, uh, and I'll wave him goodbye. Yeah, well, goodbye. Uh, and uh, until next time, you've been Nerd Funnel. Bye, everyone.